In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is the third Sunday of Great Lent, and it's dedicated to the veneration of the Holy Cross. That's why we have the cross out there. That's why you saw us. Instead of the Holy God, uh, the, the, the three saw you the Holy God, instead of taking that, we went out to venerate the cross. And it has been dedicated to the cross since the 7th century. But it might surprise you that, you know, the church, the Orthodox Church, is, is really the most ancient form of Christianity in the world. But it's a living church. It's not stagnant. It's not static. So things happen in its history when sometimes things shift. For instance, before the 7th century, the Gospel reading for today was actually the one of the tax collector and the Pharisee. Uh, it's been moved to the Triodion before Lent, and the same thing with last week with St. Gregory Paul and us. You can't say the, the Holy Orthodox Church has always had a uh, second Sunday of Lent dedicated to St. Gregory of Palamas. He only lived in the 14th century, so we, we couldn't have been dedicated to him before that. So going, and then that was actually dedicated, I believe the gospel reading for that Sunday was originally the prodigal son. But that's been moved to the beginning, just before Lent. So things shift according to circumstances. Great things happen in the history of the church that are earth shaking And what happened in the 7th century that caused this shift was a world war between the two great superpowers of the time, which was the East Roman Empire and the Kingdom of Persia, which was not yet Islamicized. They were Zoroastrian, pagan uh, empire. And there was a great war in which pagan Zoroastrian Persia completely overran the Middle East. They went all the way through what today is Assyria, Jordan, Palestine, and Egypt, modern-day Turkey and Lebanon, all the way to the walls of Constantinople, which they put under siege. From the Balkans, the pagan Avars, this nomadic uh, nation that had of uh, nomads who had come from Central Asia were allied with them. And it looked like all was lost. When the Persians sacked the city of Jerusalem, they also took the relic of the Holy Cross as a war trophy back to Testophon, modern-day Iraq, uh, to the heart of their empire as a war trophy. So everything looked like it was lost. But there was a very energetic Byzantine general in North Africa, what today is Tunisia, who took his navy and his, 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 his soldiers and sailed all the way to Constantinople, lifted the siege. There was a great effort in the part of the people. They melted down church bells, everything for the war effort to save Christendom. And they ended up driving the Persian army entirely out of all the lands they had conquered and even drove it to the heart of the Persian Empire and retook the relic of the Holy Cross that was a trophy in the palace of Testimony. The Emperor Heraclius brought it back to Jerusalem to restore it to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre and he could not enter the city because there was like a force field preventing him from carrying the cross, even though he dismounted his horse, until he took off his crown and his boots and entered as a simple Christian pilgrim. Then he could bring the relic of the cross back to the Holy Sepulchre. So this was a great source of jubilation throughout the Eastern Mediterranean, uh, which had been liberated from basically 20 years or 14 years of Persian rule. They were very brutal. They actually sacked most monasteries, slaughtered monks, uh, destroyed churches everywhere they went. Even the, the church of the nativity in Bethlehem, which is built over the cave where our Lord was born, is still there. It's still one of the oldest churches in Christendom. Why did they spare that one church? Because the Emperor Justinian, just a couple of generations before, had had a very large mosaic on the wall of the three wise men from the east 
coming to offer their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh to the Christ child. And when they saw these pagan priests, they saw Zoroastrian priests. They looked like their own priests. So they spared that one church. So this was a great event that the cross was restored. And it became a great cause of jubilation. And also, it was restored around the time of Great Lent. Also in March, on March 6, 326, was when the Empress Helena had discovered the cross. So March was a crucial time, it falls during Lent, and the Orthodox Church basically moved the feast of the finding of the Holy Cross on March 6 to the third Sunday of Lent, when they also celebrated this great event of the cross being restored. Also, as time went by, this became a great day also in the imperial city itself of Constantinople, where they also had a third of the cross. When the Empress uh, Helen had discovered the cross, she had it broken into three parts. One went to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, one went to Rome in the Church of the Holy Cross, and one went to the church in New Rome, where it was taken out on the third Sunday in Lent every year in the, in, in the Cathedral of Hagia Sophia and left out for the people to venerate, to come and kiss the actual cross of our Lord. And this was the high point of Lent, actually, if you were there in the city. So then, in this post-iconoclastic period of the 8th century, when icons were restored and images were restored and crucifixes were restored, that then this became the custom in Orthodox churches throughout the Eastern Mediterranean and beyond. So that's why we venerate the cross here on the third Sunday of Great Lent. And we are blessed here at Holy Cross Monastery with a very small <coughs> sliver of the cross obtained by our Father Theodore when he was in Rome with an audience with Pope Paul VI together with his Archbishop when he was on his way to Lebanon to be made an Archimandrit. Um, they had an audience with the Pope and he obtained two relics from Rome at that time. One was a tiny fragment of a bone of St. Nicholas from Bardi and a tiny sliver of the cross. So we will have it for you to venerate as you come and leave today. Thank you all for being here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.